Hi, I'm Cameron Hawker. I'm president of the ACT branch of the Australian Institute of International Affairs, and I'm joined today by Dr. John Hart of the ANU uh, to discuss the recent US midterm elections. Uh, John, we've seen a, an increased um, Republican majority in the House and uh, now an absolute majority in, in the Senate. Um, when I was in DC in July, it seemed to be that the writing was on the wall, but commentators since uh, have uh, remarked on the extent of uh, the Republican victory. Did, was it bigger than you expected? Uh, politically, it was catastrophic for the Democrats because uh, although the writing was on the wall, as you said, they had hope that they would be able to contain the losses. There was a slight hope that although they would lose seats, they wouldn't lose enough to give the Republicans a majority. It looks like the Republicans are going to end up with uh, 54 seats in, yeah. the Democrat, in the Senate, um, uh, and of course their majority in the House has increased. So what Obama has suffered is a loss of that buffer that he had yeah. with uh, a Democratic-controlled Senate in the 113th Congress. Yeah. So I think things politically will be very different in the, over the next two years. Yeah. What do you think the president's game plan will be now going forward? Um, he, he, will he negotiate more? I mean, obviously he'll have to. The word I was hearing when I was up there is that this, this West Wing has a shocking reputation for actually going and working with legislatures. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Obama hasn't distinguished himself yeah. in terms of his handling of Congress. In fact, he hasn't distinguished himself in terms of handling his own party in Congress. He's been a pretty poor party leader. Uh, initially, when he came into the White House, he had this view that America was moving into or should be moving into a post-partisan age mm. and was very keen, at least rhetorically, to bring the two sides together. He's never done it. I mean, Republicans have made it quite clear that they're not very interested in cooperation, that they're interested in sabotaging the Democratic agenda, doing what they can to help uh, the Democrats lose the next presidential election and take control away from the Democrats in Congress. And yeah. they've succeeded in most parts. So yeah. uh, I think uh, I can't see how, even though both Obama and Mitch McConnell, the incoming Senate majority leader, made overtures on election night to being more cooperative, working together, there's been no sign of it since then. Yeah. And I see no reason why things will change. I mean, I think you're, what you're going to see over the next two years in the 114th Congress is more of the same. That's what's been going on for about the last six years, yeah. but worse. Yeah. I, I've already seen an interesting discussion around um, the President's use of um, executive orders yeah. and, and some uh, uh, you know, Fox News, for example, referring to him as King Obama. And, I mean, that goes all the way back to John Adams, I think, this yeah. idea of yeah. you know, the imperial president. And will, will we see Obama... Um, even more so relying on executive orders? Well, I, th I think he's got two um, major tools at his disposal for dealing with an obstructionist Republican-controlled Congress. One is to seek out ways of achieving his public policy goals as best he can through executive action, yeah. part of which will be executive orders, part of which will be using regulations under existing statutes. And that's fine until such time as the Republicans uh, take some action to overturn those executive orders or executive uh, regulations by statute. But then, of course, um, Obama can always veto. Yeah. And the veto is the other tool. Yeah. I would expect to see, uh, now that he's no longer got the buffer of uh, a Democrat-controlled Senate, uh, the Republicans are going to be passing Republican legislation out of both houses. Mm. And... Uh, uh, Obama's only recourse where he disagrees with it is to veto. Yeah. And he's got some power in the veto because although the Republicans have got a majority in both houses, mm. they don't have a big enough majority to overturn the, a presidential veto, which is, of course, two-thirds vote in both houses of Congress. Yeah. And that means to uphold a presidential veto, you only need one-third plus one of one house. Yes. The Senate, one third plus one is just 34 senators. The Democrats can do that easily. So, you know, I would expect to see vetoes. I'd expect to see executive action. I'd, say, I'd expect to see a lot of Republican hostility to uh, Obama's use of those powers, but I think there's very little they can do about it. Mm, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, the, the power of the presidency is being uh, you know, described as the power to persuade. Um, 
if he finds himself unable to persuade at, at home, uh, do, do you think he'll be looking more and more overseas to build that legacy as he's moving towards the end of his office? And, and what sort of areas? Uh, we see only last week that uh, yeah. uh, the president gave a famous address in uh, in Brisbane on the G20 and climate yeah. change yeah. was clearly a big issue, and that's had uh, domestic ramifications here in Australia. Um, yeah. Is that shaping up to be something? Really yeah, I think to, uh, I think funnily enough, the poor showing of the Democrats in the election might free Obama up. I mean, everyone's talking about him as a lame duck. Yeah. I don't think a, a president is actually a lame duck in his last two years in that he can't do anything. He can actually do a lot of things, but uh, um, I think it will free him to uh, do what he really wanted to do and not have to, not have to compromise with Republicans in Congress because he knows he's now he has there's pretty no chance. <laughs> and, and now not even to have to cave in to some of the, the interests within his own Democratic Party in Congress. So I think it'll free him up. Um, you know, he made that speech in Brisbane, which was really quite surprising. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's initiated the climate change talks with China, yeah. um, which I suspect the Republicans will try to um, unravel if they can. I'm not sure that they will yeah. be able to do that. And I would expect to see him move on other areas. Um, uh, over the next two years. But in terms of establishing a legacy, I think it's probably a little bit too late for Obama to add to or substantially change his legacy internationally. I mean, he's been there for six years. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, until recently, been handling uh, foreign policy reasonably well. Uh, and the, the response to terrorism, the situation in Syria, uh, is not great. He hasn't handled that very well. Iran is a problem. Iraq is a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and just finally, I know um, you're going to discuss this at more length um, in a few moments to our, our audience, but um, could you give us, a, I guess, a snapshot, a sneak preview of your take on the runners for the uh, two, 2016 presidential election? What, what I will do, uh, um, you know, is still a long way out. So, uh, I mean, all you can do is identify the sorts of people who've been named in the American media. Yeah. But what I would say is that I think the 2016 presidential election creates a huge problem for the Republican Party, partly because they already have a big field. There are about 12 uh, individuals who are seriously looking at an attempt to run for the president. Some of them are governors, some of them are ex-governors, some of them are members of Congress like Rand Paul or Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz. And one of the things you need to do in a presidential nomination contest, which is the first step, win the nomination before they can fight the election, is to differentiate yourself from the rest of the field if you're going to stand a chance of winning the nomination. Well, what you've got uh, with the Republican Party at the moment is about a dozen or so fairly well known, uh, uh, fairly powerful uh, uh, um, individuals who are capable of getting their hands on a decent amount of money to sustain a campaign, I think that's going to be very divisive for the Republican Party. And when you look at it compared to the Democrats, although there are about three or four Democratic candidates that are being talked about in the media at the moment, only one of them is being talked about seriously, and that's Hillary Clinton. Yes. Now, um, you know, it's dangerous to say Hillary Clinton will have the Democratic nomination already wrapped up. I mean, people saying that at the end of 2007, you know, less than a sure, year before true. the yeah. 2008 election, and yeah. she blew it. But um, I, th I think things are different. I, I think it looks like um, there won't be as much competition within the Democratic Party. So I think the first thing you'll see in the Republican Party is, unfortunately, a party tearing itself in public because it does have such a long list of pretty strong candidates for the nomination. Mm. Excellent. And who's going to win it? I, I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Fair assessment. John, thanks for joining us. A pleasure. Um, for more information on our activities, uh, please visit our website, www.internationalaffairs.org.au.